Good morning, students. This is still Mr. Matthew. And I'm presenting trigonometry. Trigonometry. Trigonometry deals with triangle, as you remember. Particularly right angle triangle. So these are the objectives. One, that I expect you to know. Apply tangents, cosine, sine to solve right angle triangle. The use of Pythagoras theorems, example on trigonometry and then exercises. These are the four objectives I expect you to know before the end of this class. The end of this class. Trigonometric ratios. One, tangent. So you know. Tangent is opposite over hypotenuse. For instance, this is the opposite to this triangle. The triangle to this angle. B is the opposite. Opposite side. Y, C is the adjacent. Adjacent. So tangent of this angle theta will be B over C. Similarly, Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. This is the hypotenuse. 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 So sine theta of the same angle is B opposite over A. And lastly, cosine, which is adjacent over Hypotenuse. So this is the adjacent C. It is C over the hypotenuse A. Now we'll be using this one to solve problem. Other identity that you are expected to know on that trigonometry ratio. One, you should know that sine theta, sine of this angle, is equal to cosine of this one. That's the meaning of the first one here. Similarly, the cosine of this, this angle is equal to sine of this other angle. That's the meaning of that. And you should know that the tan of this one is the reciprocal of this one. That's what you have in the third one. And if you recall the definition of tangent, it will give you the same thing as sine theta. Tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. This is going to be the last identity I'm going to give to you before I start the examples. Example 1. Example 1. Calculate PR this place and B R S here. I'll call you X and call you Y. Looking for X and Y. X is in this right angle triangle here. This is the right angle. Y here, Y is in the other triangle. The right angle triangle. So we have two right angle triangle. So here we go. In that triangle, triangle PQR. This triangle. We have tan 50. Tan 50. This is the opposite. X is the opposite. PR is the opposite. Y. This 6 is the adjacent. So we are going to use tan. That's why we have tan 50. Tan 50 of this angle. Opposite over adjacent. We give us tan 50. So making... PR, the subject of the formula, PR, the subject, we have PR equals to, this 6 we multiply tan, this is to multiply tan, and tan 50 is 1.192, multiplied by 6, to so give us 7.152, then taking it to three significant figure, we have 7.15 centimeters. In the second triangle, which is triangle 
PRS. PRS. We are looking for PR. We are looking for PR. P. We are looking for RS that I call Y here. If you look at this, the X is the opposite. X is known now. X now is the hypotenuse. So combining opposite and hypotenuse. Opposite of will give us sign. So we now have sine 28 degree. Sine 28 degree will be this RS over this PR we have gotten. We are going to use the uh, the the value we got for before we approximated, which is 7.15.152. You should always use the value before you approximate whenever you are using it, not the approximated value. Take note of that. It's very, very important. So cross multiplying, we have this. This side we multiply sign 28. So it will give us 3.357. Then taking it to three significant figure, we have 3.357. 3.6 centimeters. We'll move on. I hope that one is clear. Now, other example, example two. We are given the ratio of the sides of an isosceles triangle to be 7 ratio 6 ratio 7. So find the base angle to the nearest degree. This is a wire question. Take note of it. It's very important. So we need to draw the triangle. We need to draw the triangle. So this is isosceles. The, three, the two ratios that are equal, 7, will be the vertical side. You can see they are the same. These are vertical side of isosceles triangle. The side that is, the ratio that is different will be the base. So the base is, the ratio is 6. So M is the midpoint. So from here to here, BM will be 3. Because the, 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 the point at the center here will bisect the side at 6. And it, they will meet at 90 degrees. Very important. This is not the height. This is not the height. Now we want to get this angle. This is the base angle. It's also the same with this. So, we are going to look, we are going to take this triangle. So, in triangle A, B, M. In triangle A, B, M. Right angle at M. This is the opposite. This is the adjacent, and this is the hypotenuse. So, combining adjacent over hypotenuse will give us cosine. So, cos alpha give us 3 over 7. And taking this one to, uh, to decimal places, we have 0 0.4286. Now, to, in order for us to get the angle, we take the cos inverse of this. So the cos inverse of this gives us this degree. Degree, that is 64.62 degrees. So taking this one to the nearest whole number to give us 65 degrees, which is the answer. So this angle is 65. And this one is 65. You can see that they are the same. That's the base angle. So maybe one of the questions I'm going to give to you, find the vertical angle. Find the vertical angle. Let me call it beta. Find B. So quiz find beta. Now example three. Solve the equations. Solve the equation. We are going to use the other trigonometric identities that I gave to you, relating sine and cosine, as well as sine in that order. So we are taking the first one that cos theta is equal to sine forty. So this is what is given, but we know from the identity I gave to you that cos theta is sine 90 minus theta. 
So this will cancel this. They are the same. Sine will cancel sine. So you see that this 40 degree, it is equals to this angle here, 90 minus theta. 90 minus theta. Angle 90 degrees minus theta. Now making theta the subject of the formula will give us 90 degree minus 40 degree. And that is 50 degree. That is A, 50 degree. If you put 50 degree there, you will see it to be the same thing as sine 40. So we are saying that sine 40 is the same thing as cos 50. You can use your table or calculator to check that. Secondly, B, we have sine, we are given sine x equals to cos 2x. So using the other identity, since we have sine here, we have to use the one starting with sine. So sine x will be cos 90 degree minus x. So you cancel out this, they are equal, you cancel cos. So this one will be equals to this. That's why we have 2x is equals to 90 degree minus x. Collecting like term, we take this minus here to give us 3x. So 3x is equals to 90. So dividing both sides by 3 will give us x equals to 30. x is 30 degrees. If you put 30 here, you are going to have sine 30 will give us cos. 60. You can check it out. This is half. It's equals to half, which is true. Now I have another example. A ladder. 6 meter rest on horizontal which is rest, which is foot on horizontal ground and leans against a vertical wall. The angle of inclination of the ladder to the horizontal is 80 degrees. You see, fine, correct to one decimal place. The distance of the foot of the ladder from the wall. B, the height above the ground with the upper end of the ladder touches the wall. So we are looking for X and Y. If we look at this a right angle triangle, this is the wall AB. AB is the wall and this is the horizontal ground. This is the ladder. 6 meters long. Now if you relate, this is the opposite. Why this is adjacent? Adjacent. So we are looking for adjacent. I relate this is the hypotenuse. This is the hypotenuse. So opposite of hypotenuse will give us opposite of hypotenuse. Yes. When you look for this, you have x to be this. And then for y, similar manner, you have this. Now I move on to another example. This is another example. A point C on the same horizontal level as the foot of a tower. Yes. If the distance of t from the foot of the tower is 80 meters. And the height of the tower is 60 meters. Find the angle of depression of t from the point, from the top of the tower. Give your answer to the nearest degree. We draw the triangle. Draw the triangle. This is the tower. Yes. This is from this floor here, from this point here. I want to get this is the angle you look down to see here. So this angle and this angles they are equal. Oh, call it alternate angle. So this is the angle of elevation, why this is the angle of depression. So they are the same. In order for us to get this angle, this is the opposite. Then this is the high, this is the adjacent. Adjacent. So adjacent, opposite of adjacent will give us tan. So tan 
of this angle x will be 60 over 80 and that will give us 0 0.75 looking for the tan inverse we have 36.87 degrees to the nearest will give us 37 degrees Now, relating it to bearing, the bearing of x from y is 0, 4, 6, that's 46 degrees. What is the bearing of y from x? Here I go. So this is the knot. We are the bearing of x from y. So from y, this is y. We start from y. You draw the cardinal points. Draw the cardinal point. This is the knot. So this angle you move when you go to x this way. So this angle is 46. When you get to x, you draw another cardinal point. This angle is alternate to this. So here will be 46. So we want to get the bearing from the north of x, the, the total sum here. But here is 180. This angle is 180 degree. I'm going in a straight line. So the bearing of, of y from x is the sum of these two. The sum of this 46 and 180. That's why the answer is 46 plus 180. And that will give us 226 degree. 226 degree. So these are the assignments for you. These are the assignments. You do them. Do them. By then you do them, you're able to understand that very topic very well. That's why I've given you this number. And it's taken from New General Mathematics. The same, you can also see it in uh, Man Mathematics, even Star Mathematics. It says one. Now, correction to some of the past questions I've given to you. I took, I've taken number 18. Inside that triangle, we use this formula that related to sine, both for triangle to be half, 4 times 10, sine 50, the angle between those two sides. And this will give us approximately 15 meters square. In a similar manner, band, this one is bounded by 6, 6. That is half times 6 square, which is 36, sine 38, the angle between the two sides, 6. And by the time you work that one, approximately 11 meters square. Here, this C is parallelogram. Parallelogram. So it's going to be the side between the two given angle. 5 times 8, sine 63. And the answer will be approximately 36 cent meters square. Similarly, we have 2.5 and uh, 4. So the area between them, uh, the angle between them is 124. So the, the area is uh, this times this. That is 2.4 times 4. 2.5 times 4, sorry. Sine 124. And the answer is approximately 8.3 meter square. I move on to another in that same exercise, I'm doing number eight. Number eight. I want to get the length of the rubber band. I have four circles, four circles like this. So from here to here is seven. So this place is perpendicular to this. Here will be seven. In a similar way, here is seven. This place will equally be 7. Similarly, we have it the same here. Here is also 7. Here as well is 7. So we have 7. So when you add that one, will be 4 times 7. Now to get the remaining, this one will form a complete circle. Because the angle here is 90. The angle here is 90. The angle here is 90. The angle here. So this four form a circle of radius 
So the circumference of that circle, since they are four, to form a circle, so it's the circumference of a complete circle, which is two times 22 over seven times 3.5. By the time you approximate, this one will give us 22 plus four times seven will be 28. The addition is 50 millimeter. So that's the length of the rubber band. Number nine is the size 12D. We want to find the area of the shaded portion. The, the entire shape is a rhombus. So the area of the rhombus minus the area of the sector will give us the area of the shaded portion. The area of the rhombus is nine square. That is 81 sine 70 minus 70 over 360 times 22 over 7 times 81. By the time you do that, you approximate it. You have 27 centimeters square as the area of that shaded portion. I move on to another number. Number 6, exercise 15C. We are given a force room. This is the force room of a pyramid. The top is 4 meter by 4 meter, while the base is 20 meter by 20 meter. And the height of that first room is 12. They ask us to find the volume of the entire pyramid. So we need to extend it and have the complete. We call this part that have been cut of the height of this pyramid, we call it X. So with that, we can find the entire height as a ratio. Similar triangle, using similar triangle. So using similar triangle, the entire height here, this entire height over X, this is the entire height, that is X plus 12. The height of, yes, over X, this one that has been cut off, would be the same thing as the, the side of the base, which is 20, the one at the bottom, over the one at the top, 4. And this one will be 5. So cross multiplying with this, we now have 5x, we multiply this, 5x will equal to x plus 12. Collecting light, so collecting light terms, we, we now have we now have x to be 3. So the entire height is 15. So this is the entire height of the pyramid. Now we know that volume of pyramid is 1 over 3 times the area of the base, which is 20 times 20 times the height 15. And the answer will be, will be 20,000 centimeter cube. I move on to another example. Example six, I want to find the area of this, of this shaded portion. Here is eight, while well, here is six. So from the center here, here will be three, here will be three. So the bigger radius is 11, while the small radius is three. So we want to find the area of this shaded portion. So it's going to be area of the bigger semicircle minus the area of this small semicircle. So that's why you have difference of two square here. Because it's semicircle, that's why you have half pi into this. Put in 11 to replace big R and 3 to replace small r. We now have this. And the answer would be 176 centimeter square. I move on to another one. The entire circle, we have two concentric circles, one at the middle. Here is R, 
why this one is 3x, 3r, sorry, big r is 3 small r. We want to find the area of this shaded portion. So it will give us different, it will be pi into, into big r square minus small r square. That's different of two square will be this. So putting 3r here and small r to uh, mm -hmm. we now have this. This will be this, and we now have the answer to be 8 pi r square. Now, we are given the area of this. The area of this, we are told is r meter square. Therefore, we can get the length l square is equals to r. That's why we now have this. We can now make l the subject to now be the square root of r. But we know that the perimeter of this is 4l. So we are looking for half of it. We divide it by 2. So when you divide this one by 2, you have 2l. But we know that l is the square root of this. So we now have 2 root of r to be the, the semi-perimeter of that square. Now we have number 19. For size 12a number 19. So from the this we remove this triangle from that. Here is Q R. You draw the height, we want to get the height of that rhombus. We know this angle to be 30. Here is 12, is given. So we want to find this height because the height is not given. So in this triangle, it's a right angle triangle. I call it N. So this is the opposite of I put N on the sign. So making A the subject, we have 12 sine 30. That will now give us sine 30 is half times 12. The answer is 6. So the height is 6. The height is 6 centimeter. So in order for us to find the area of the trapezium, it will be half times the height, which is 6, that is 6 over 2, plus sum of the parallel side, 1 is 8, 1 is 16. So that's why we have 8 into 8 plus 16. And that will be, this will give us 3 times 24. And the answer is 72 centimeter square. This is going to be the last correction I'm going to do. We are told that the, the length is 3 times the width. We are asked to get the length of the width of this rectangle. But the perimeter is given. So using the formula for perimeter. So we use the, we have this. So we have this one. We have this times this. Three plus x all into 2 will give us 72 72 and that will be 8x equals to 72 dividing both sides by by yes give us 9 so the width is 9 centimeter and that is how to do that. I wish you the best. If there's still more question, you can call my you can you can send text message to me and I will reply you. I believe with this should be able to answer every other question that I've given to you. I will see you with another topic, the continuation of this using Pythagoras theorem. Thank you and have a lovely day. God bless you.